I'm in Photoshop and I want to create a color palette for week four assignment two. Now I want to plan ahead because I am going to use one of my palettes for a design. So I want to make sure I have a variety of, of value contrast as well as color to work with. Now I want to first thing is download my Photoshop template and open my color wheels making sure that I'm using accurate color wheels. And I want to use my line tool to actually mark the colors so that I stay on point with choosing accurate color strategies. I'm going to use violet and yellow green, orange, and cyan blue, making sure that the colors are equidistant on the color wheel. Essentially, tri tetrad colors are two pairs of complementary colors. It doesn't matter which four, as long as whichever one I choose, I choose the one exactly across from it, and then, you know, whichever other pair I choose, they are exactly opposite each other on the color wheel. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is select my color. And let's see. Okay. Oops. Sometimes, if you're using your eyedropper tool and you select uh, the next, the, you know, another open window in Photoshop, it won't quite open up. So there we go. Oops. I selected the wrong color. How did that happen? Here we go. Let's try that again. See, when I'm in caps mode, I click the caps mode, it looks a little bit different, right, when I select the color. So here we go. I want to choose the violet, and that's going to go here. So caps mode looks a little bit different. When I'm not in the caps lock mode, I can see it looks like I, I the, you know, the bucket icon is visible. So it just matters. It, you know, I accidentally cl clicked the cap mode, so that's why it suddenly looked different. Okay, so now I have four colors. And I want a range of value. So I'm going to choose oops, a tint, tone, and shade of each one in order to give myself a range of color while at the same time having um, a, a different value structure to use. Let's see, I like that rich kind of brown that's around 50% of the shade. So let's create a shade. And now I want to increase my brightness again because I want to use a tint next. And I want some color in it, but I still want a lighter value. So let's put it down at 25%. There we go. And I want to do a tone where I have a gray value, and it's, it still has some color in it. Uh, so if I put that around 50%, notice that uh, I still have some color in it, and yet it is a tone. It's a little bit more neutral. Okay, now Command U brings up the U saturation and lightness tool here, and I can take the color out and check my value to see if I have a range of value. So the first one is at 50%, because all maximum saturated views are at 50%. This one is now at 25%, this one is at 87%, and this one is at 44%. So it's a little bit darker than this one. If I wanted to make it um, even darker than that, I could essentially go a little bit further, right? Create slightly darker value and still have some a sense of color that's neutralized. Yeah, it's pretty close to that first one. Somewhere in the middle, you know, a little bit more saturation, a little bit, adjust it until you get a color that you, you like, but it's still a tone. Yeah, I like, I like that a little bit lighter. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I want to go to my next color, my blue, and actually that one should be at maximum saturation. It's not quite. If it's at 9900, it's pretty close. It just depends on what pixel you grab. Slight variations do occur. Okay, so I want to do the same thing. I want to create a shade. Let's give us a nice dark shade. And go back to, oops, I didn't mean to use that. I want to create a tint. So I want to make sure the brightness is at 100%. And I want some color, but I want it light. Uh, but I want, you know, I can make it maybe a little bit less bright, a little bit more bright, whatever I want to do in terms of value than the color orange that I have there. That's nice. Okay, now I want to create a tone. I can have a real neutral kind of color with blue. Blue gives us a nice cool gray color. 
So we're working with thinking about color temperature as well as value because we're going to use our palette. We may choose this palette to use for our design for week for assignment three. So we're thinking ahead. Value, contrast, color temperature contrast, lots of things like that to keep in mind. Okay, going in with the violet, I'm going to create a shade. And I'm varying the saturation a little bit. Okay. I think I want to make this one really dark. I could use this as an accent dark. There we go. Okay. Now I want to take that right again, create a tint. Okay, that's a nice that's a nice color. Let's use that. And now I want to create a tone. Again, now I have a warmer appearing gray, because violet's one of those colors that's kind of right on the edge. And the next thing I want to do is choose my green, go through this process again. And, you know, you can do it randomly by eye, you can do it mathematically, making sure it's all equal. Whatever you want to do is up to you, as long as you get a nice range of value contrast as well as color contrast. I want this is going to be, I'll say, a little bit lighter, but... Um, there we go, and let's make a tone. Okay, this is a slightly lighter value, so. Okay, now command U, let me check my values and see what I came up with. So I have a nice range of value here, right? Darks, middle value, slightly less dark, deeper value, middle gray, 44, 82, check my light. So I have a nice value range, lots of contrast. To work with for my next um, color wheel uh, assignment. My, my, I'm sorry, my next color assignment week for assignment three. And the next time, next palette I need to do is a triad. So I'm going to select triadic colors. Let's see, why don't we go with um, green? Well, we could go with red, green, and blue. Yeah, or yeah, why don't I do that? Red, red, green, and blue. Oops. I want to make sure my color is black, so I'm going to switch to that default color. RGB, the primary colors of the additive color wheel. Okay, and start again. My green, put that in one corner. put that in another corner and or you know you can put them all in the row if you want it. It, it you know it's certainly up to you how you want to organize that and red and put that in a third corner okay and I can create rows of tints tones and shades and I can choose one of them uh, or create kind of a, a grayer tone of one of them, thinking about accents. So maybe I'll choose blue to create uh, a grayer tone so that I can have a darker value accent for neutral areas in my, um, my design. And I want it to be a little bit, I want to start with that because I'm thinking ahead about developing depth and contrast in my next design. I want it to go a little bit darker. Okay, I still want some color in it but I want it to be a little bit darker in value. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm using my blue as an accent. So rather than creating colors, uh, a third color um, blend, I'm actually sticking with the palette and creating a little bit of a range here, okay? So now I've got some blue tonalities and I'm going to use, go from there to create a couple of tints or, or very light tones. That's a, it's still a tone. Okay. I'm getting some grays, some cool grays to work with. And then up here, I think I want to create a really light tint of the color. Okay. So I've used blue to take up these two whole uh, rows in order to give myself real contrast to work with. And, you know, I suppose if I if I decide, well, I'm, I'm going to put a little bit more color in that, I can increase the saturation a little bit so that I have more of a sense of color. You know, once you 
kind of increase the, the range there. You can adjust it a little bit, but you want to still have a sense of, of smoother transition. So uh, whatever you do, making sure that it doesn't, you know, the eye isn't, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The eye, it doesn't feel like the color jumps a little bit too much, right? So we're having a, a range of value, yet we're still getting a sense of color. Okay, so these are a little bit more neutral, these are a little bit more color, and there's a nice transition, nice smooth, gradual transition. Okay, now I want to do some things with the, the green. Uh, oops, sorry, green. I've got now my tone of green here. It's a pretty bright tone. I want to, say, I want to use that as a brighter color in my design because it's so vibrant. Uh, let's go a little bit more like a jade kind of a green here and make a really bright green uh, tone here. Lighter, brighter, but still a little bit more neutral like for plants or something like that. And now I'm going to use red do the same thing, create a tone, or I'm sorry, a shade over here. I only have tones here, but I wanted a shade of red there. Create more of a neutral tone that sort of has a warmer quality. Say I wanted to use something organic, uh, plant forms, and I wanted some accent reds, I could do that. And I wanted a lighter, brighter, almost a peachy, kind of a pinkish tone but it's still a tone, there we go. Now I have palette two, triad done. Okay, so I've got my colors marked, I've stuck with the colors, and I've thought ahead for um, my next assignment. And for the third palette, it's up to you to choose from the other color strategies, dissonance, analogous, complementary, split complementary, monochrome, and go from there. All right, let me know if you have any questions.